Okay, everybody, so I'm back, and hopefully I've gathered all my equipment, so to speak. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the little fry box, and in case you've forgotten what it looks like, there it is. And uh, first I needed a template for a fry box. Now, I know those of you who have a silhouette have access to a fry box. Um, certainly, you can go to one of your fast food restaurants and beg them for a nice clean fry box, tear it apart and cut your template. But I probably found uh, an easier way. I did a search on the internet for a fry box template and happened to find one that was put out by Creating Keepsakes. You can actually print your template onto paper or cardstock and cut it from there if you like which is what I actually did. But if you don't have access to a printer, you can certainly hand cut and trace each one of these. It would not be difficult, I don't think, at all. So let me show you the cut piece that I did, and then I'll tell you. Now, if you have a scoreboard, you can certainly line up the straight lines in your scoreboard. For those of you that don't have a scoreboard, and that's what I'm going to use today is just my little bone folder and a ruler. Um, it doesn't matter what ruler that you use. I've already pre-marked these so that I didn't make a mess of myself on camera. But anyway, the idea is that you're going to score and score and score and score. All the straight lines. Now the curved lines, I must admit, were a little more difficult to do, but if you take your time and either um, a bone folder or you can use one of the McGill tools, which I'll show you look like this, that some people have to make flowers from, etc. Um, they look like this. And you can use one of these also to score. Like I recommend the, the thinnest point, which I think is a one millimeter. You can't even really see it there. It's just a little pointy uh, tool with a ball tip on the end. But if you have a bone folder, you can use that. And what I chose to do was just go very slowly and play connect the dots until I got this little curve down and you're going to do that on both sides. Now once you have that done you're obviously going to give it a good fold. I use my bone folder, you can use your finger or whatever else you have on hand. <laughs> I don't know what that would be other than a finger and just fold on your lines and give it a good crease in each of the areas like that. Okay, and then you're going to fold the ends up and you're going to make sure that the front flaps are on the outside, not the inside. Oops, I forgot to gently crease my little bottom, which is no big deal. I just used my fingernail and kind of uh, held it up and bent it towards me so that it would take that curved shape. And then once I have it where I want it, then I can give it a little pinch along that edge. And I'll do the other side real quick. Bend it up, pull it in along that line, hold your finger there so you get the right line. And when you're done, give it a few little pinches. Eventually it's going to go into shape. So, again, you're going to make sure that the front flaps are towards the back. And what I did was made sure that my lines were, were even along the bottom edge because that'll give you the nice box. And then you can take some glue. Now while we're talking glue, I use Zip Dry. It's uh, a little expensive, but I guess what glue isn't anymore. But you can feel free to use score tape or the Scotch Quick Adhesive, any glue that will work. But I got sent this by Maggie White and I really love it. It dries really quick. I haven't found any 
paper curls or anything like that with it. So just line the edge up at the bottom. Like I said, make sure that these are pretty square. Hold it down for a minute and it should go. Okay. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Add the glue. Make sure that your edges along the bottom flaps are squared. So there they are. When they're even, just press it down and hold it for a second. Oop. Maybe I don't have a little enough glue on there, but hopefully I do. So just hold it. Well, let me add a little more glue. Why am I frustrating myself? No big deal. And then make your flaps meet. And there's your french fry box, hopefully, in just a second. There it is. How cute is that? Now, obviously, you can do the french fry box in pink and brown, whatever is your choice. I recommend that you use cardstock or you can use double sided paper if you have that. Now, while we're talking double sided paper, let me just show you that. That's what I used to see if you could do the pizza box that way in case you had double-sided paper that you wanted. The other thing with the pizza box where I added the easel card on top just to make it a little bit different is that you actually could just use the pizza box, put decorations on there, tie it up with a ribbon, put the person's name on it if you like, and that could be your favor also. <clears throat> And here's the other one um, that's showing it in the cardstock of the craft paper with the easel card or without the easel card. So the possibilities become endless. Now, let's move on to the boot. I actually found the boot on, uh, on Tip Nut and it actually is for a pillow but it didn't matter to me because I liked the shape I thought it was a little more feminine boot etc now as you can see you could actually add little diamonds to each side of the boot I tried cutting diamonds and my diamonds looked really screwy so I gave up on that but what you're gonna do is take the template if you have Microsoft Word, you can um, enlarge and reduce images on there. If you don't, um, then, you know, the template is probably going to be around, uh, I forget exactly how many inches it came out to, maybe around five, I'm guessing, maybe a little smaller. So you'd have to enlarge or reduce it another way. But what I actually did was put all of them on one sheet of paper for the various sizes that I thought I might like. So I used this one and that's the one that went on both the bag and on top the pizza box to make the easel card and I think that one measured actually about five or five and a half inches tall. So when I cut it out I ended up with one piece and from there I decided to be able to differentiate from the top and the bottom and to be able to give a little definition if I chose to use all the same color boot was that I would actually cut this along the line and end up with two pieces like this. So here's actually the top of the boot, here's the bottom of the boot, they fit together like a little puzzle. So when I put together my boots, I actually started out with a full boot and then I took my bottom part, put that on the bottom once I cut it out of another piece of paper. Now I just want to show you that for the bottom boots, you, you know, the sky is the limit. You can actually use, um, you know, a different color once you put your um, paper down that makes the the bootstrap it changes the whole look of the boot you can you know glitter around the edges 
you can glitter the whole boot top. You could glitter the top and leave the bottom plain. You can even use a ribbon to make the bootstrap, um, which I did on this little one here just to show you all. And then you can take so many variations of flowers once you have, you know, um, an idea for the little spur. You could even use a button. As I said and showed you on one of them, you can use a rosette and you can change up the colors. You can glitter the inside of the rosettes. You can use uh, buttons, such as I did in the paper bag, to make your flower center. So it's, it's all up to you. That is up to your imagination and what you like. Now, I happen to have an embossing folder, which is what I ran the... Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's what I ran the cardstock through once I had the cut. So this was the only part that I ran through my embosser to make it look uh, like it was grained leather. But certainly, just like I've shown you on the one, it doesn't have to be embossed. They look just as stinking cute plain. So, let's see. I think that's about it as far as the tutorials go, Miss Emily. I hope I've covered everything. I hope that I have used items which are affordable to you and accessible to you. And um, I welcome all of my viewers. If you have any ideas for Emily for a cowgirl themed baby shower, please feel free to either put it down in the comment section below or better yet do a video response to this video. I know her shower is in the end of September so in a way time is of the essence and I thank you all for participating. Um, I, I'm going to put up some ideas for decor. And you can go from there, Emily. I just work strictly on your favors. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Your comments are always welcome and appreciated. And have a fabulous day.